Welcome. If this is your first time, I'm Kyle, and I am one half of The Wandering Shores. So as you saw from the thumbnail, we're going to talk about converting our Starlink from AC power to DC power, and we can't t do that without the help of X Starlink. Um, so many of you probably saw a video that we put out about a month ago where we highlighted converting from the old standard proprietary cables to the antenna over to uh, Ethernet cables. And these folks saw that video and said, hey, we've got something else to enhance your Starlink experience. Now, a couple things we want to say. This is only for the version 2, which is the articulating or actuating uh, dishy. Um, this will not work for version 1 or the new uh, version 4, I think they call it. Um, but we are looking forward to putting this through the ringers. Um, it's a conversion from AC to DC, which for those of you who follow us know we boondock almost exclusively. And any way that we can save some power in our lithium batteries, the better. And I'm going to show you what's in the box. I'm going to show you which of the stuff in the box we're going to use and which of the stuff, at least for our setup, is not necessary. But it all comes. This is the XTAR DC conversion for Starlink version 2 mode EL3 set. So in this box, you're going to get, most importantly, instructions. We'll go through those here in a little bit. You're going to get a few Ethernet cables. I'll explain the use of those later. You're going to get a DC, I'm sorry, AC power cord. I'll explain why that's in here for particular setups. You're going to get a DC power cord, and then you're going to get a few other 12 volt cords. You're going to get one that plugs into the cigarette lighter so you can use it on a power station, and you get one that can direct connect to the battery, um, whichever is your preference. Then, the main parts of this is this puppy and this puppy. So I'm gonna go through how we set this up. Oh wait, one other thing that comes in the thing, I forgot, you actually get a router. Um, we're not gonna use this router for our install since we already have a PEP wave. And so we're just going to bypass this router and go directly into our PEP wave with this setup. But it does eliminate the need of using the Starlink router and saves, hopefully, a lot of power. And we're gonna put it through some tests here shortly. Welcome back. So I mentioned there's a few things in this kit that I'm not going to use. I mentioned one of them earlier, which is the router. We're not going to use this router. Therefore, we're not going to need the white Ethernet cable. We're not going to need the DC power cord, which can be used to power this directly from the conversion kit if needed. And we're not going to use the AC power kit, which also is for the router in case you wanted to power the router through AC. So these four things are not going to be used right, in so our narrow down the parts I'm going to use. Use. We're going to use the conversion kit. We're going to use the uh, power over Ethernet. We're going to use the short Ethernet cable. And for the sake of testing, I'm going to use the cigarette lighter. However, when I go and do my final installation, if it's worth it, I'm going to use the direct connect to the battery because it's going to be a little bit easier for me to use because I can you know, put it right there where my batteries are and install it. So the other thing, this is not part of the kit, but I wanted to share with you the fact that I got this. Um, one of the things I realized currently with our Starlink on the regular standard router, I've got a smart plug that I use to turn the Starlink off at night um, if we're in an area where I want to kind of conserve some energy. With the DC hookup, you can't do that with the smart plug that I have. So I did some research and I found this little doohickey. Um, this is actually basically a smart plug for DC power. It can handle up to 10 amps, which is sufficient for this device. And uh, so this is not part of the kit. However, I will be putting the link to all of this stuff in the video description below. And I will also include this in case this is a situation where you want to be able to, um, you know, turn on and off your uh, Starlink in, you know, whatever time of the day, you can set it up on a schedule or whatever. Again, um, I haven't used this yet, so I'm hoping it'll work the way I expected to, but I watched a video on it and it seems to be exactly what I was looking for to help me control the power on this device instead of having to either flip the power switch, which is right here, off or 
pull the plug on it. Um, so that is going to be in the video description below, but we'll jump over that hurdle once we get to it. The first thing we need to do is we need to get this thing tested. I need to find out how much power our current uh, setup is, is taking through AC. And then I need to do the same testing with DC and see if there's a significant enough uh, power savings to justify installing this. All right, I'm back with the results from test number one. So basically what I've done, I'm gonna be putting some screenshots and some short videos here kind of up on the screen as you guys are watching it. But I took my portable power station, which would allow me to measure the power um, going out both on DC and on AC to give it an equal test. There's probably a thousand other ways to do this test. I'm just sharing how I did it and it I think gives a general uh, working knowledge of whether or not this thing is potentially going to save us some power um, converting the Starlink over to 12 volts. So what I did is I took the current standard AC hookup and I plugged it into the power station as you can see in this image here. I then put the Starlink in stow mode. I put the battery at 100% and I then activated it to monitor, to monitor the power consumption over the first 15 minutes and you'll see the numbers jumping around as it starts to power on and look for satellites. And then at the 15 minute mark, I stopped that short little snippet and I then let it run for an entire hour to see what percentage of the battery did the Starlink utilize using um, the AC power plugged into my power station. And here are the results. So you can see from the results that I found is that after running the Starlink on AC power and I did have the internet being used, I, I booted up a, a YouTube video and just let it play so that it was a consistent power usage on Starlink using it to for the internet. I went from 100% battery when I started the test down to 84% battery when I was finished at the one hour mark. That means that is a 16% loss in the power on this battery. And I'm going to share after I do the 12 volt, how I did the calculations and conversions based upon watt hours, um, just because that's the easiest based upon the rating of this particular uh, power station that I have. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how I'm hooking up the 12 volt uh, system and gonna hook that up to the Starlink. Um, I've got the instruction manual here. Well, I mean, it's a instruction sheet. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the conversion kit here. You're going to plug in over here on the 48 volt PoE output. You're gonna plug that ethernet cable in there. You're going to then plug this ether, the other end of the ethernet cable into the POV itself. Now, the nice thing, listen, I know there's a ton of ways that you can convert this to 12 volts. I've seen some of the videos, but it includes splicing. It includes building a bunch of different components from different manufacturers uh, out on Amazon, etc. This kit comes all together. It took me like five minutes to assemble this thing and get it uh, to get it going. So the nice thing is you don't need to convert the cable that you're already using to the antenna to an ethernet if you have the, the regular proprietary plug because the proprietary plug fits right into the end of this adapter here. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, for the sake of the video, is I'm gonna go ahead and take the 12 volt power from the cigarette lighter. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in right here and then I will take my ethernet cable that runs currently from my Starlink manufactured ethernet adapter. I'm gonna take that completely out of the equation because the antenna is gonna be running into here. I'm then gonna plug the LAN line or the ethernet line into this one, the LAN line right here and connect it to my power, or, I'm sorry, connect it to my PEP wave and hopefully everything boots up and I'm getting some power. I'll let you know. 
So in YouTube world, that was only a split second, but in the reality, we're fast forwarding to about an hour and a half after, um, you know, I let, filmed that last clip. So I'm going to show you, like I did on the first test with the AC power, I'm going to show you the results of the power using the power station, connecting it to DC power. Um, again, I ran it for 15 minutes, the boot up from, from stow mode, and then I turned off that recording, the screen capture of the power usage there, and then I came back at the exact hour mark, and I show you how much power I've used in this same battery. I had charged it back up to 100%, so all things were equal, and I'll be damned, folks, this thing saves a lot of power. <laughs> Um, so as you saw in the AC test, I used about 16% of the battery. In the DC test, I used like 9% of the battery. So I'm gonna go through and crunch some numbers and share with you kind of in watt hours what that looks like based upon the power station that I've been using for this test. Um, but I, I think this is a significant enough power uh, saver to Put it into uh, the mix, you know, we boondock, and any way we can save power, um, you know, the better. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so let me crunch a few numbers for you. Um, this power station has a watt rating of 300 watt hours of power available. Um, so, what I did simple math is I figured, okay, if it's at 100% and therefore for every 1% drop, you're using three watt hours. So in the case of the AC connection, um, over the period of one hour, I used 16% of the battery, which would equate to 48 watt hours over the period of one hour. Um, with the DC conversion from XSTAR Link, I used nine percent of the battery calculated over is 27 watt hours and so instead of 48 watt hours I use 27 that's I, I'd have to do some you no know, math with a calculator but I would say that's probably about a 40 percent savings in power running this thing on 12 volt I also did some speed tests the speed tests were almost identical as far as um, at my pep wave whether I was using the Starlink router or if I was using the new X Star Link, um, so I definitely think this is a double thumbs up. Um, I'm going to put the uh, links in the video description below. Um, they are having a sale, and you can get a discount if you're watching this video. I've not found another single video about this product; it's so new. So I'm hoping that if you do decide to get something and convert over to 12 volts, um, you'll use our link below and it'll give us a little bit of an affiliate bump um, through their program. The other thing I need to do now, and I'll show you at the end of the video what I ended up deciding to do, but I'm trying to figure out how and where I want to mount this. I also need to um, insert and wire up this DC smart switch. All right, please excuse the mess in here. It's a construction zone, but I wanted to show you how I decided to ultimately I set up all system. of our power is under here. So I got under there and I ran the 12 volt line up and comes out right there in the corner. And then I've got this set up like that. So one thing I will say is I didn't install this right now because I got it powered on, I got it synced up to my phone, but when I would turn it on and off, it was it was getting 12 volts here, but it wasn't sending 12 volts over there. So I think one of the you know relays or something might be bad, so I'm gonna have to reorder this and replace it. But what I did do is I used some WAGO connectors right here so that when I get the new one, I can very quickly just put it in its place, mount it to the wall right there, and I'll have 12 volts going to the device. You can see my ethernet cable coming in from the outside. So, hope this was helpful. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. Again, links for everything that I'm using in the video description, as well as a discount. So check and see if it's something that might be working for you. And two thumbs up to 
this 12 volt converter. If you enjoy free camping and boondocking across the United States, well, we've got a lot more for you. If you haven't already checked out thewanderingshores.com, and we have an interactive Google map there where you can see all of the spots we've done campsite reviews of, as well as things to do in the area.